right, we're going to continue the migration of a DSFW server. This is, I consider it really the post-migration, but technically, if you look in the documentation, it's still under the migration procedures. Uh, this is after the reboot. So the first video, if you watched it, uh, took us through the transfer ID and the reboot of the target server. Now the target server has assumed the identity of the original DSFW server. So after the reboot, we should get the DSFW features uh, feature configuration wizard to pop up. So that two main things to, that it'll conf can configure is wins, which really you can do manually if you'd like, and it's not that big of a deal. And then uh, sites and subnets, which you do need to definitely run this to configure that. What it will do is it will uh, make sites and subnets for you, uh, add some partitions uh, to some some objects. So let me show you what, g give you a real quick idea what this is. So if we go to, we'll just use console one here, in the configuration section there's a sites right here and we have our default site you'll be able if you install a new OES 11 SB2 domain you'll get a uh, an option to configure this at this time to say, say what what name do you want it to be this is the default default first site we have our servers in there so this server object in order to move it around this will become a partition because it is a container so this is I think kind of a drawback of sites and subnets being configured is that all servers in here will be partitions and that is so you can use the tools to move them around and it will be the MMC tools and they'll allow you to move these objects around uh, with no problems but it has to be a partition and so it's a partition uh, it's like a move subtree with the partition operation okay so let's go ahead and get back to our my our migration so so like I said this will come it should pop up after the migration generally it if you're doing a migration it doesn't therefore go ahead and pull up this tid and the feature provision uh, the feature provisioning wizard fails to launch after the migration as you can see uh, this value here in your xad.ini file needs to be set if it's set to no change it to yes so we'll go ahead and open up that file and take a and make a change so I've got it right here so like I said we've got it set to yes all right now so we'll just say I actually added this line it was not there so I just added it save it and if we reboot now it will pop up automatically so I can either reboot or I could just copy this and launch it okay so it's up we just log in and you'll see what I mean as far as what you can configure. By default, the sites and subnets will be checked and you won't be able to uncheck it. So if you'd like to do the wins, this is not a big deal. And you, uh, with this, you only want one server per network for, for wins. If you have some other questions about this, there is this TID right here. Uh, DSFW NetBIOS name. It's also some information in the documentation. But uh, the NetBIOS name wins. This gives you an idea. So if this this uh, command fails, uh, if you're doing a query for your your domain name, and so it's unable to return the NetBIOS name, it's good to have an, a Win server set up. And again, one per network. This is all you really have to do. This Win support equals yes in your Samba.com. Not a whole lot. You can also do some more. Uh, configuration. There's a lot. There's stuff you can look up uh, to to do even more as far as configuration for wins. Uh, we'll go ahead and select that, uh, and then say yet yeah, next, and it'll just go through and and uh, add our configuration. So we have this wizard does a little health check. Again, you want to make sure everything is is up and running. Uh, something I probably should have done before doing this. Actually, let's uh, abort real quick. 
let's just make sure all the services are up. So let me pull up this tit. So it actually talks about it after running the the wizard, making sure the services are up. Usually because you reboot and, and it pops pops up. In this case, it didn't, so we're starting it. But it's a good idea. XAD CNTR L validate. If they are not up and running, just restart the services, and they should come up. So like this, not available. Let's just do a reload, and I'm sure it will come up properly. And again, if you like, after ch put, put placing that setting in, go ahead and just restart this server one more time, and generally the next time it comes up, everything is up and running. So again, here we're just fine. Everything was running. If we went and did a health check, uh, we I'm sure everything would be in, in good order. Let's go ahead and again start this wizard, and we'll get this uh, this piece run, um, configured. Okay, it's up. Wizard next. And if you do run into a problem in this pre check, this is it wants to make sure that that uh, everything is is healthy. It's possible possible that a server's down, synchronization's not great. So make sure everything is healthy before uh, getting this piece started again, um, because otherwise the pre check will fail. So I'll go ahead and let that run, and then I'll check back in once this is done. Something I bring up too. If you want, so you can see the command that's actually running. This is actual the sites and subnets script to to actually do the configuration. You can see the one for the win. So if you just want to do sites and subnets and do wins later, I've seen where wins has failed, and it's again not that big of a deal. You can go back and reconfigure it, or just add that line in the samba.com uh, if you've got a problem. But what this is doing is going through, and you'll see if you come and check in here. We're gonna we'll eventually see this. This is reload and see this is now a partition. So it's going adding this as a partition and it'll allow us to create new sites and new subnets uh, here by and allow us to move these server objects. Even though they don't look like server objects, really they are, uh, but they are containers because they have to have objects below them. And the rule in eDirectory is if it is a container it has to be a partition in order to move it so that is why we're making that a partition so when that runs th that's really the the piece that takes the longest so again that's why health uh, eDirectory health is so important if one server is down that replica will not turn on I should say a server in the replica ring of the parent partition so in this case any server that has the configuration partition will have a replica of this uh, unless it's a subnet or <laughs> a subnet uh, sub reference then uh, it will not have a, a, a the replicas but if it's a read writer master it will need to add that replica now we're restarting the services and we should be done I wonder if this is still set to yes so sites and subnets is configured when support uh, if we set that to no it won't launch again but we can leave that and let it actually restart and work properly but we can set that to no so it does not relaunch let's go ahead and quit and here we go this so we're at the check our status uh, it's fine I actually just barely got done checking it so let's go ahead and run the preps on here so this uh, you can see what it's gonna do with the rights Make sure that your domain control is unique, your domain ID, all this is, is added. Uh, it should have been, the unique domain ID should have been there before. Uh, I, we need to, I'll show you what's going to happen. We're, we need to have a ticket first. So, how do we get a ticket? Knit administrator. I think part of the stuff is on this box. I've got too many things running, and so it's very slow. <laughs> this is uh, 
my own system, so it's not like a production system where things would be a lot quicker uh, to run. So if we go ahead and, and run this, we should uh, it'll go through, and like I said in that the documentation, um, add this, just verify all this is is, is proper. Uh, so while that is running, let's go ahead and look at the migration. So we can see this is now a partition. We change our view. We can see our servers that have a replica. Both of them have a replica of that. And the configuration. These are all just like I said, partitions here. Um, let's go back and clean up some objects. So if we look, uh, this is running. The next is the post migration procedures. Click on this. Uh, it's going to say talking about the transfer ID and some specific objects to clean up. For DSFW, really the only objects to clean up are anything with migrate in them. So there's usually about four or five of these objects right here. One, two, three, four, five, and or oh, six. Sorry. So these objects need to be cleaned up, and you might want to just verify in here. There might be, I've seen this, the, this uh, this object needs to be deleted. So you could do a search for it. Just be aware if you search for like migrate or anything like that, if, it, if there's anything in the configuration or built-in or any of these other containers. Uh, so like if I do a search and I do uh, sub, actually let's go up one to Novell and I'd say I do my great and I do a star afterwards come on there we goes we might find oh you know what I'm in under a that's why not doing so hot here what up up Okay, find. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. So you can see right here, configuration, configuration. So you might get, uh, depending on your, the name, you, you want to verify you're not deleting a wrong object. Anything you see with like MS or anything like that, it, it's a system object. So the so this but this will give you an idea of, of where all these um, objects could be. So it's good to name your your migration server something. Uh, well, if you use migrate, just be aware that uh, it, there's other objects that have that name in it. Um, but it is good to, to name it something unique. So we can see all these. We can go ahead and delete. And and we have the one object in here. I've seen this several times too. That's it, really, as far as the, the cleanup. We're done. Let's go back to our DSFW server. Let's see. Uh, so we get a little error here. If I reboot and run this again, but it did say it did samify this this uh, container. Um, yeah, you know, I've never actually never seen this before, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. I I would, as a precautionary, I should probably reboot and run this command one more time just to make sure that everything is pre prepped. But as far as a migration, that's it. We're we're done. If we go ahead and Re reboot the I, I would reboot one more time just to be safe to do a health check and we should be good uh, completely migrate with the server thanks for watching